Hello, everybody, and this is the Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. She is part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast on our show, and her name is Rebecca Wolf. She is an author, and she's also a parenting coach. And today, she wants to focus on talking about temper tantrums and you know, why children have them how to react to them, and what's the best way to solve it so the child understands how to deal with things. And then the parents also could do and teach them different methods and coping mechanisms. So the, these temper tantrums can become more controlled and you know dealt with in, in the best way possible. So Rebecca, this is the best topic possible because so many parents go through this and they just, you know, it's a repetitive behavior that, you know, consistently happens when a child doesn't get their way or they're upset. And a lot of times parents get frustrated. They don't know how to handle these temp temper tantrums. And, you know, some of the ways that they deal with it may not be the best ways, or they're just looking at, you know, how do I deal with this? How do I get my child to stop taking these temper tantrums? So, you know, I, I think this is, you know, a great topic for you to expand on. And I'd love to hear more about it. Well, great. Well, Stacy, thank you for having me on your show again. I'm very excited to be here and glad to be able to help parents think through what to do when their child is laying on the floor in the middle of the grocery store, kicking their feet and crying and screaming. And, uh, you know, I think it's something that all parents have experienced. And yeah. if you're a new parent, this is something to look forward to, right? <laughs> um, but really the the key points that I'd like to address today are one is, is recognizing that tantrums are normal, right? And yeah. so um, if you are new to it or, you know, getting ready to experience the first one, no, not to, to panic or think that there's something wrong with you as a parent or your child. Yeah. Um, I think it's also important for parents to recognize that tantrums really are not about you. I think sometimes we can internalize that, um, that the behavior of our child and think, oh my gosh, they're doing this to embarrass me or they're doing this um, to make me mad. And in fact, that's not the case at all. So remembering that tantrums are not about you. And then also, you know, there are some things that we can do to kind of help prevent tantrums. Um, I, I don't think you would get through childhood without one, but I think that there are th some things that we can do to minimize tantrums. So I'm excited to, to talk about those topics today. Yes, me too. You know, I like to know, like a lot of times, you know, children who have temper tantrums, a lot of times it's because they have emotions, they don't know how to deal with them. You know, what do you do when your child begins to have these outbursts and you might be in a store or you might be, you know, at a, at an event with your family and, you know, it might happen at home on a frequent basis. Um, but, you know, how do you manage these tantrums? And and also a big question is, why do these children have tam temper tantrums? Because a lot of times parents think the child is misbehaving, the child is out of control. And, you know, it, it, they don't understand that maybe it's just the child not understand how to deal with the emotions that they're going through. So maybe you could touch base of why children have temper tantrums and what parents could actually do, some of the methods they could do that are healthy methods to help their child stop having ta temper tantrums. Yeah, great questions. So when we think about um, what you shared is, is absolutely correct, right? This, the temper tantrum is typically because children's emotions are out of control for them. Um, yes. I, I share in my book that, you know, some days I come home from work and I want to lay on the floor and kick my feet and cry, right? <laughs> it, uh, it, it, in some ways, it would be a great way to release emotions. But as adults and, and actually as, as children mature into, into young adults, um, you learn how to manage your emotions. And so sometimes yeah. when I'm working with parents, I use the analogy of like a water faucet, right? Like a knob right. that you can turn to adjust the flow of water. And young children don't know how to even use that knob if they even had one, right? So when they get frustrated, when they get angry, uh, perhaps when they don't get their way, um, right. that flood of emotion is overpowering, right? And they don't have the coping mechanisms. They don't have the faucet to turn. And so it's just a flood of emotions for them. And so what we need to do as parents is help them learn how to manage those emotions. You know, 
uh, help them learn that there is a way to, you know, to, to adjust them and, and other ways to express those emotions besides laying on the floor, kicking your feet and crying. And right. so typically that's, that's why our children have, have tantrums. It's, it, it's kind of almost a natural way to, to release this flow of energy that is absolutely overwhelming for them. And so as we think about um, helping them and helping them learn that there are other ways to do that, uh, I think that one of the most important things is that we don't add, as the expression goes, fuel to the fire. And yeah. so if a child is having a tantrum and uh, our first response might be to also get angry and frustrated, right? Maybe you're trying to get the shopping done or maybe you're at home and and trying to get the house in order before people come over, all kinds of things, right? Well, yeah. they're picking up on our stress, right? Which is also contributing. And so, you know, when your child does start to go into that tantrum, you need to, as the adult, kind of pull yourself together, right? Bring yourself yeah. to a, a, a point of being calm because what you want to do is counter those angry, frustrated emotions with calmness, right? Which yeah. can be very challenging, right? This is something that we have to learn because our instinctual mm -hmm. response is, is to match their, their emotions. And so we have to very consciously go, okay, you know, I'm going to bring calmness to the situation. Right. And I think that when you think that through, that's also why punishment does not work in this case, right? Yeah. Um, if we, if we punish the child again, all we're doing is contributing to all that negative emotion. It's yeah. not going to make them stop. It's only going to escalate the tantrum. And so we have to think about other ways that we can address that, that tantrum and help that, help that child learn how not to respond, um, in that way. And so, there's several things that you can do. A lot depends on the situation, right? I, um, I uh, use the situation about, well, what if I'm somewhere where I, uh, you know, maybe we're at a, at a wedding or maybe we're at a graduate, you know, we're somewhere where I don't have a lot of, um, you know, I can't be loud or I can't, I can't really talk. Right. Yeah. One of the best things you can do there is redirect, right. Find something for that child to do to yeah. what, what you're really doing is getting their mind off of that frustration onto something else. And so, right. um, sometimes I would like pull and, and this is going to age you. I would pull a, a check out of my checkbook, right. Or a deposit mm -hmm. slip and a pen and, yeah. and let them scribble or color, right. Give them something to do, distract them. Right. Um, sometimes you might just need to, to, um, lovingly and gently pick them up and say, okay, let's go outside. Let, let them get that energy out. So redirecting can be a way to support them, especially in, in instances where you uh, don't have a lot of resources, right? You're somewhere right. besides home. If you're home, right, that gives us a lot more opportunity to try some other things, right? And so, yeah. um, what I call, you know, let's refocus or regroup, right? Let's, uh, mm -hmm. let's support the child in learning how to, to channel that energy in different ways. Um, sometimes you have to let them just, uh, cry for a little while, right? One, we don't want to send the message that you can't express your emotions, right? But we want to help them find better ways to do that. And so when they're laying there crying, kicking their feet or whatever, you actually, in addition to being calm, you want to be gentle, sometimes just touching them. Um, you know, our heart center is of course right here on the front of us. And it's also on the back of us. And so even just gently putting your hand on their heart, either on their chest or on their back brings them back into their body a little bit. Right. Yes. And it, it can help them relax because that's what we're trying to do is, is help them, um, kind of also get back to being centered. And so, um, doing that gentle touch, it helps to bring them back. And then once they're a little bit, um, a little bit calmer, find mm -hmm. something to do with them. Right. So, Hey, let's take some time and let's maybe sit and read, or let's sit and play a favorite, uh, game or something, right. Let get them into, 
um, into a space that they associate with being calm and comforted. So uh, that's that's kind of a start, right? With with how yeah. how we can uh, address these tantrums. Now, you were mentioning earlier about a water faucet analogy. Now, what exactly is the water faucet analogy? Right. So if you think about, you know, if you're thinking about your bathtub and turning on your, um, on the water, right. When Mm -hmm. we turn the faucet all the way on, right. That water Mm -hmm. just rushes down into the tub. Right. And that is typically how emotions hit our young children, right? It is Mm -hmm. a flood in essence, if we're sticking with kind of that water analogy, it's a flood of emotions that, that hits them. What we learn as we mature is that we can turn that faucet and lower it, right? So if you and I were in a, had a disagreement, right? And we were maybe getting angry, right? Mm -hmm. we know how to adjust that faucet so that we can have an adult conversation instead of one where we're potentially yelling and screaming at each other. And so what we're trying to do is support our children in learning how to um, uh, control that knob so that that flow of water or that flow of emotion can be more consciously managed, right? It's, it's, It's what I'm asking parents to do when their child is having a tantrum, right? You're going to feel that flood of emotion. You're going to, oh, yeah. feel, right. You might feel frustrated or angry, but you know that that is not going to serve this situation. So as an adult, it's like, okay, I have to turn off that knob, right. And make sure yeah. that I come from a very calm position in, in dealing with this situation. Now, what happens like when the child is completely in a very deep, tantrum and no matter what you say no matter what you do they're going to come back at you and they're going to start yelling and screaming and 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 it seems like whatever you try no matter how you lower your voice how calmly you talk no matter what you say the child is just in this very deep you know temper tantrum and you can't get them out of it you know and it's like okay what do I do do we take a time out do I say, well, how about maybe we, you know, we separate for a little bit and then we try to talk or the, maybe the child is just too much into the t- tantrum tantrum where they can't hear anymore. They're just reacting. You know, what do you do when the child is really into that deep temper tantrum? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I think that, you know, you have to recognize that sometimes that just has to, you have to just let it escalate. And so yeah. your job as a parent is just to make sure that they stay safe. So right. you could say something like, I see that you are very, very upset right now. I, you know, if it's helpful, let's let you cry for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and what's interesting too, and, and this has to be age appropriate. This isn't for very young. This is if they're a little bit older and can really start thinking through things right. is when you say let's, you could even say, how much time do you need? Like I would use that sometimes with my children where if they were mad about something or sad, I would actually say it's okay to be sad, but how much time do you think you need to be sad? And just by introducing that idea that they can control how long they're going to be sad or how long they're going to be angry is helping them to understand that, that we do have control over our emotions. Right. I think that it's, it's, it is a, a measure of our emotional intelligence that we don't feel like the outside world controls us, but that we, you know, control ourselves. Um, yeah. I actually saw a great quote the other day that said, it isn't about what happens to you. It's about how you handle the situation, right? Right. Get us out of that mode of thinking that, um, that, that we're just reacting to what happens. No, we really do have control, right? We could get a flat tire and we could get really upset or we could calmly get the tire changed. We yeah. have a choice in how we address that. So when this child, back to our tantrums, when this child is in this um, heavy tantrum, right? Let them know it's okay. I can see that you're very upset. Let's take it. And, and you may have to enter. Let's take five more minutes and let you just really cry it out. And then we're going to find something else to do. Right. Right. Now there are times when, um, 
you know, parents are, are all, you know, we are not perfect as adults. And for me to sit here and say, Oh, just calm down. Right. is easy to say, but we know that that's not always easy to do. And so sometimes you also need to, um, uh, you know, take care of yourself as, as well. So, um, some of the things that you can do, right. Is, um, and again, it depends on the age of the child, but you can say, you know what, mom's going to take a break for just a minute while you are doing this tantrum so that I can get calm, right. Talk about what you're doing and, you know, leave, go into the room, right. You want to be able to still hear them, but take some deep breaths, help yourself get back to that, um, to that point. Um, also, you know, ask for help, right. If you have, if your partner's home so that you can ask them, say, Hey, I'm really at the end of my rope would love it. If you could just come in here and, and help with this tantrum, um, depending on ages, sometimes there's siblings where you can just say, Hey, come, come sit with your sister for just a minute. I'm just going to go into the kitchen for a second and, and, and calm down. Um, so, you know, I do recognize that this, this is one of the most challenging things that parents have to have to deal with. Um, and then, you know, some other things you can do too, when they're in the depths of that is that idea of distracting. So, um, getting anything in front of them, you know, a favorite stuffed animal, or, um, it could even be a favorite, you know, drink or food item or right. Something that distracts them first from what they're doing. Cause before you can address whatever the situation was, you have to get them back into being present and get that faucet kind of turned off. So, um, distraction can be very helpful with that particular situation. Are there any, like you mentioned, like you would sometimes take your checkbook out and you would have them, you know, color on a check and stuff like that. You know, I always feel like drawing and, 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 and writing therapy is so good because even for a child, you know, they can spell the letters wrong. They can write them backwards. They can, you know, whatever, but you know, they're, you know, in their head, they're, they're expressing their emotions or they're drawing pictures, you know, to show that they're, you know, how they're feeling. And sometimes I think that could also help parents understand, you know, what their child is going through. Because if Mm -hmm. you look back and in school systems too, like that, you know, when they have draw therapy, sometimes kids will, will draw angry pictures or they'll draw things because that's how they're feeling inside or a scare picture or something like that. You know, what are your feelings about maybe incorporating, you know, drawing into, into it somehow, or maybe, you know, at, you know, if they're a little bit older, you know, maybe five or six or a little bit older, you know, drawn, you know, to, or writing to express how they feel inside. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, like you said, you know, writing, I, I think one of the most important thing about writing, right. Is it helps us process, helps us learn actually. Um, yeah. as you know, working on your book and as I worked on my book, you learn so much just from that process. It's yeah. fascinating to me. Um, so absolutely writing, drawing. And I think what you bring up to is what are some things that you can do to actually make it so that student, that um, children don't go into a tantrum, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's the, the physical basics, right? Make sure they get plenty of sleep, make sure they have healthy food, right? So if, yeah. if children are eating a lot of processed foods or a lot of sugar, right? We're actually kind of setting them up for a tantrum, yeah. just, just like us, right? If, oh, if yeah. I were to go all day without eating, right? We talk about being yeah. hangry, right? The same thing happens to our children. And so really being conscious of their, their needs. And, you know, as, as parents, we know that those needs are not very consistent. Some days children need yeah. a lot of sleep, other days, not so much. Same right. with food. And so really making sure that those physical needs are met is, is going to go a long way in keeping children from even getting into a tantrum, right? Because right. they, they have the resources, but what you bring up too, is kind of that emotional side, right? What are mm-hmm. some things we can do? Um, and certainly writing, drawing, um, is an excellent way for, uh, children to express. And so, 
you know, to give an example, you can typically tell when your child is headed that way, right? Heading, yeah. right? And so that's the time to say, hey, let's stop for a minute here. I can tell that you're getting upset. And again, depending on the child, and this is, you know, this is the, the um, I don't want to say challenge, but this is the creative part of being a parent is yeah. every child is unique and needs right. slightly different. So you may yeah. have a child that needs that, that create creativity, right? So uh-huh. Play-Doh or playing in the sand or writing or drawing or any of that kind of creative blocks or, you know, Legos, any of that type yeah. of stuff is going to help that child, you know, let's spend some time doing something that you enjoy. And I think that's going to help you not be so angry or frustrated. And the yes. other piece is for those children who are physical, right? So, Cause not every child is, um, works with, with the creative piece. And so if they're physical, it's like, Hey, I see you're getting upset. Why don't mm-hmm. we go outside and play tag or let's go outside and, and play on the swing set. Or if they're getting really angry or frustrated, show them how they could hit a pillow, right? Yeah. Sometimes you just need to get that out and show them that, um, you know, especially if they're getting ready to get into an argument with a sibling or yell into that pillow right? So yeah. verbalize it and, you know, really help them start to see how, um, because we can't bottle up those frustrations, right? We know right. that they don't have the knob yet. And so yeah. teaching them ways to express it and to get it out before they even get into that tantrum mode, um, yeah. is very, very helpful. No, I, I notice also like you have, you know, different generations and now new generations are coming in and they all have their own way of parenting. And I noticed like the new generation is completely different than how I grew up, how we raised our children, how my parents raised us, you know, and, you know, and how their parents raised them. And, you know, a lot of times I'll, when I'm at ga- gatherings and you have different age groups, you know, they're like, I don't understand, you know, why they don't, you know, do this X, Y, and Z, you know, when I grew up or when I raised my kids, we didn't let our kids do this, you know, that's ridiculous. And then you have all these inputs, you know, of, you know, you pointing the finger and saying, oh, I don't think they're doing it the right way. And da, 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 you know, but, you know, what do you do when you're, especially in a family that's very opinionated, they're all from different generations, they're all, you know, they all have to share their opinion, even though it's not asked for, and it could put pressure on the parent, you know, on how to, how to raise their child, you know? So what do you do when you feel that, that pressure from all the different generations in your family, because you do have those families, a lot of them, most of them are, you know, there's a lot, you always have those, those, you know, certain ones in the family that have to have their voice known, even though they may not even know what they're talking about, but (laughs) they want to be heard. They want to be heard. Yeah. 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 So how do you handle situations like that? Yeah. I mean, that is, that's a challenge with, um, thinking about raising children differently. Um, you know, uh, I made that commitment to raise my children without punishment. And I will say that, you know, my family thought that I had lost my, you know, lost my mind. Right. It's like, I know, you know, I joke in, in my book that they're picturing teenagers running wild down the street, you know, tipping over cars because they've yeah. had no, <laughs> no discipline. Right. And right. I, and I share with them, there's lots of ways to discipline mm-hmm. and, um, it, rather than using punishment, we're going to use teaching. Right. And so, um, it, it definitely is a challenge as you try something, especially if it's radically different, right. Right. Um, change brings out a lot of fear in people. Yeah. And, and I think that that advice that, that you get comes from that place of fear, right? They love you. They love your children and they want what's best for everybody. And so they fall back on what they know, right? Mm -hmm. Because change and newness, um, typically brings up a lot of fear. And so addressing that fear is really what parents have to do, you know, to say, you know, I, I know this, this approach isn't what you did. I know that you're concerned and I appreciate that concern. And, um, this is, this is something I have to do though. So, right. right? It's just kind of staying firm in what you're doing and not, you know, 
I talk about this a lot, right? That, that pushing thing. So the more that we push our children, the more they're going to push back. If we have people around us who are pushing, if we argue back with them. And so uh, giving, uh, recognizing what they're saying, acknowledging what they're saying, giving um, uh, credit to what they're saying. I know that's how we've, how we've done that on the planet. This is how we've parented yeah. for a long time. Um, will help them from not feeling like they have to continue to push. Right. Right. I also feel like too, is that you have, you have parents that have grown up in families where there was constant yelling, you know, cause the further you go back, the, the, you know, the more there was discipline, you know, where they took out the belt or they hit the hand or they pulled on the, on the, on the earlobe, you know, or they got right in their face with the finger and they started getting really disciplined. And, you know, so you have all these generations who have this, you know, and even though they say, well, you know, we turned out good and da, 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 da but then they talk about the, those moments never left their, their brain. So obviously right. it had a negative effect on them, whether they, realize it or want to admit to it, you know, these behaviors, you know, actually harm them in a negative way, you know, and, you know, so, you know, a lot of parents too, they act out, you know, they yell and they scream, their child yells, they yell back, you know, but then, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, these behaviors are learned from the mm -hmm. environment live in so if a child is seeing their parents consistently yell back or their child if the parent isn't ha handling this in a calm way then you know this is just going to cycle on so you know for parents too i think parents have to learn to make change you know as well as we work on the on the child and we we help the child deal with their emotions in the proper way i think parents also have to take a step back and learn how to deal with the emotions, you know, and, and the situation going on and, and handle it in a calm, you know, verse manner. So this behavior doesn't consistently, you know, you know, snowball into the next generation. Yeah. You know, and that's really in my, you know, in my intro of what we wanted to talk about today is that piece of this is not about you. And so there's a whole section in my book about what I call triggers or hot buttons because typically um, when a child does something that we don't like, it's typically because it's triggered something in us, right? Yeah. It's triggered an emotional wound from when we were a child or from how we were treated by our parents. And so you bring up just a critical point to the whole idea of parenting is um, uh, you know, our, our children are our best teachers. And, yeah. you know, the example that I like to give is that you can be in a household with two parents or with the grandparents and a, a parent or whatever the situation is, and a child's behavior will be very triggering for one person and not at all for another. And you're like, yeah. and that's very confusing for the child, right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, it, it demonstrates how um, our child's behavior, and it really could be anybody's behavior, even an intimate partner. Um, it, it's triggering us, right? They're holding up a mirror and, yeah. you know, so, uh, you know, I'll share, you know, one of my triggers was, was being valued, right. Kind of having yeah. a little bit of that self-worth. And so if a, if a child did something where I didn't feel like they valued me, right. Mm -hmm. It would be totally triggering. And I would want to lash out and say, how dare you treat me that way? Right. If I were yeah. to actually verbalize what I was thinking. Right. And, but when that comes up, when you hear yourself say something negative or, you know, in your mind where you're getting ready to say something, that's where you have to stop and say, wait a minute, what is this really about? Because yes. children really don't um, misbehave on purpose. And I think yeah. that's what we have to remember, right? They're making mistakes. They're trying to learn how to live in this world, how to live in our culture, how to live in our homes, right? In our family culture, and yeah. they're going to make mistakes. And that's how you have to view them. Not as it's not about you. That tantrum in the store really is not about you. It's not because they're trying, you know, they they just don't even have the cognitive function to say, oh, I think I'm going to embarrass my mom right now. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so that's something that we bring to the situation. So you're absolutely right. You know, part of becoming a parent and being a 
compassionate, loving person is recognizing your, your wounds, the things that you have to work on and the things that, um, you know, your trigger points. Right. Definitely. Definitely. And what are some ways that you think a, a person like a parent, you know, that, that has a lot of trigger points that, that mm -hmm. tends to break out in anger a lot, you know, and, and, and instead of, you know, working with the child in a calm manner, they lash out too, you mm -hmm. know, do you have any ideas of tools or methods or strategies that they can start doing themselves to kind of like, so they could kind of lower their faucet. And so that way they can actually communicate better with the child and help the child overcome their tantrums. And they could also learn how to deal with the hidden emotions or the things they went through in life that causes them to lash out or yell consistently. And it's not helping either the child or themselves. Yeah. You know, I think what you brought up earlier is one of the best ways that a person can, can start to think that through and that's through writing and journaling. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I always want to tell parents, you know, these conversations are not meant for you to go back and go, I'm a terrible parent, right? Yeah. These conversations are about how can, how can you take that next step in being you know, a, a better parent or, the, or right. a parent that's going to work for your family. Right. And so when you find yourself blowing up or find yourself getting angry over a child's behavior, when you're calm, right. So that night, the next day or whatever, take some time to write about it. I think yeah. and journal about it and what was really happening there. What was I really feeling? Um, what were the, what was the self-talk in my head? Yeah. Right. And when you stop and think about that, then the next time when you hear that same self-talk, right, you can change that message to yourself rather than right. saying this child is doing this because they don't value me. You change it to this child is doing this because they're very frustrated because they didn't get to stay at the park an extra hour, which is what they really wanted. Yeah. Right. It's not about me. And just continuing to work through that, you know, in extreme cases, I would always recommend professional um, therapy, right? There are, are people out there who, who have the, the tools and the skill sets to really help people process through some yes. of these, some of this wounding. Um, so that would be the other thing I would recommend. If if you had to take today's conversation and you wanted to summarize it and, and give some really good turning points, what would be some of the things that you should, you know, suggest or emphasize to the listeners today? Right. Well, certainly we, we, you know, wrapping up and saying it's not about you. And I think that that's, that's probably the key point. Um, mm -hmm. I think the second thing is uh, teaching your children other ways to express emotions because we don't want to just right. bother, bottle, blah, bottle them up. Right. So help them learn how to express emotions. Um, uh, focusing on your child's needs. I think that um, one of the other things that, that we want to try to do in, in addition to kind of those basic needs and making sure that they're, you know, not tired and hungry and yeah. you know, sugared up or whatever is to um, give them some agency. And so one of the things I like to say is try to say yes, yes. at least as often as you say no. Mm -hmm. Right. Find a way to say yes to, you know, so if they, in the example I just gave, if they want to stay at the park another hour, well, you, you know, you can't do that, but you can say, okay, I see that you want to stay a little bit longer. Why don't we stay five more minutes longer or 10 more minutes? Find that, give them that. Okay. I feel good about myself. I got what I wanted. Not everything I wanted. I didn't get the full yeah. hour, but I right. got another 10 minutes. People fear sometimes that if they give children power or agency, that the children will actually like turn in, you know, overrun the house or whatever, yeah. when the opposite is true, when they feel comfortable in their skin and feel like they can ask for what they want and get it, then yeah. they don't have the desire to push and, and cry. And I want this all the time. If they get things, you know, appropriately that they want, yeah. it goes a long way. So really thinking of how to support your child, know that it's not about you. And then just remembering that tantrums are normal, right? Don't let right. this be a bigger deal than it is. Right. 
Yes, I think that's great advice. I, I I really do. Because this is something that people deal with all the time. And a lot of times I see parents, you know, reacting and reacting in a negative way, which, you know, could cause causes the child to react more, more negative. And the child sometimes, you know, gets even more upset. And then, you know, it, the, the problem isn't solved, you know, and, and then you have, you know, a child with built up emotions. And I'm sure those built up emotions sometimes can get really repressed and, and really make the child consistently burst out because it's just a pile up of emotions or you know consistently building and building and building and building and building and maybe that's where the chronic tantrums come in you know because they're not they're not understanding what's causing the child to have these outbursts and they let it run for so long that now it's become chronic you know instead of minor you know and uh, I think, too, you know, from what you're saying, I think parents also have to a lot of parents are in denial sometimes and they have to understand that they're human and they make mistakes and it's OK, you know, but as long as we recognize our mistakes and we try to make them better, you know, I think that's all that matters, you know, because sometimes I think people, you know, their self-worth and their their, you know, they their their ego kind of gets in the way, too. And, you know, they don't want to admit that, you know, they've made some mistakes, too. Absolutely. Now you have a bunch of services that you provide and you also have an amazing book. Can you tell us a little about the book and about the services that you provide? Sure. Absolutely. So uh, the title of the book is the gift of a punishment free childhood. And um, I always give away the, the ending and that the gift is, is great for the child, but it's even greater for the parent, right? When you uh, bring your child up without punishment, uh, it makes your life so much more peaceful and calm. And it really mm. gives you the opportunity to have a, an amazing connection with your child. So I uh, would, would recommend that it's available on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. So I would encourage you to look for that. And then I also provide uh, coaching for parents and um, that's available on my website. It, that's Rebecca Wolf, R-E-B-E-C-C-A-W-O-U-L-F-E.com. So please take a few minutes to visit and we'd love to have you log in and uh, purchase the book. I love it. I love it. You know, this has been amazing. I thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about this because it's so, this is an issue that all parents experience, you know, with their children at some point or another and, and learn how to deal with these, these issues I think are so important because, you know, we, you know, you come from different environments, you learn different, different behaviors. And sometimes those behaviors aren't good behaviors. And, and sometimes we're learning through research that a lot of things we did aren't actually really good. You know, we right. kind of, you know, we learned as time went on. So it's really good to be open-minded, to understand, you know, the other ways that you can actually, you know, raise your child and the, you know, and how, how it could ha actually have a more positive effect on your child and in their future, because everything they do, we do with our children as they grow up, you know, can you know, make them or break them, you know, because, you know, if they feel trauma or if they have unsettled emotions, it's going to travel into their adulthood. So you really want to, at this stage of the game, while they're young, you really want to be able to parent them in the what best way possible, where there's not a lot of trauma, you know, anger and any kind of negative emotions, you know, settling around the household. And so that way they could learn positive behavior and even bring that in other relationships and even in working relationships as they get older. So it's actually really important to, you know, you think, oh, temp, temp, temper tantrums, that's normal. But if you really think of it, it's, it's, it's the beginning of teaching your child how to deal with their unsettled emotions and their communication skills. So it's actually an important, you know, a very actually important thing to do is to get them while they're young and teach them positive ways to communicate, react, express emotions. And that will go far in life in, in many ways, I think too. Oh, absolutely. And that's what I was going to say too. The relationship your child has with you is the relationship that they'll have with people as adults, whether that's work colleagues or partners or friends, right? So yeah, it has huge ramifications. Yes, definitely.
Definitely. Well, this has been wonderful, Rebecca. I can't wait to, you know, see what you talk about, you know, and I know you'll be coming back on the show soon. And so I'm really excited to have you back and we can talk more about, you know, parenting because it's so, it's such an important topic and, you know, and if we can learn the, the best methods possible and, and incorporate them into our children's, you know, life and into our parenting skills, you know, so many great things could happen, you know, so thank you so much for what you do. I think it's great that you're, you know, that you wrote this book and, and that you address these issues and you know, help parents, you know, learn the right way, the better way and, and different skills that they can incorporate into their, into their parenting skills that will actually benefit the child in the long run. So thank you for all you do. Well, you're welcome. And thank you for having me on your show today. I really appreciate it. Appreciate what you do, Stacey. Uh, thank you. You have a great day. All right. You too.